guys, it's Patini Gal, and we are back over in Planet Zoo. Hope you're having an awesome day. Let's get to it and see what fun we can have today. So I wanted to put a bit of a building here to enter into this area. Initially, I was going to do a um, actual building and have an actual inside area and outside area for the habitats. But I decided just to go with this. I found it on the blueprints from Frontier. And I thought it looked pretty cool. So um, I did want to change it up just a bit to fit this path and everything. So I'm uh, going to try to get like half of the building and move it over. I show you a bit of this, but then I, I try to do some uh, some cuts here and there. Just so you guys don't have to watch all of this and so you don't have to watch all the camera movement because it does get a little crazy. So I wanted to go ahead and make this wider because as you can see the path is way wider than this doorway. So I went ahead and did what I could to separate these out and uh, just make everything a little bit bigger. So I do our best here to uh, get this all separate and try to figure out what pieces to put in to kind of um, replace what's there. So I went ahead and just copied a lot of these over uh, just to make it look similar. And you have to do the cross fighting thing where you have to bring the pieces up and down and side to side to make sure they don't do too much cross fighting. But with these rocks, I noticed they were kind of floating. So I try to move quite a bit of them because like over here, they're definitely floating. So uh, we just copy those and move them down so they're just so they're not floating because that's really weird. And here I wanted to put some kind of a cap on the top of here. So I just used the uh, pieces from the top and put them here on both sides. I think I just showed you this side though because uh, I had to do a lot of maneuvering to make it look right and look like it fit. But I did want to add this one. We changed the colors of it before and I like these colors. So I went ahead and did that, and I think I do the same. Well, I take off the meerkat on the other side because um, obviously it's not a meerkat. So <laughs> on the other side, I wanted it to be a, um, a fennec fox. So that's what we do eventually. But I use these pieces. I think they look pretty cool for a top. They don't quite fit. So I did have to move the camera around a lot to try to make sure like every side fit in right so I think it turned out pretty good and here we go ahead and just move this meerkat this sorry this Vinic Fox um, to here and uh, get it to fit in I think it fits in pretty good um, so we just kind of make sure to sink it in just a little bit so it looks like it belongs there and now I'm looking at it thinking it really needs some kind of a backdrop here so this is where I go in and try to find some of the uh, African like tiles that we got and do a little bit of a I guess a mosaic behind here I think it turns out pretty good I like it but um, yeah I cut out most of it like I said I don't want to keep a lot of this stuff in just because it's kind of shows you it's kind of uh, repetitive and it just you know I, I think once you've seen it once you've seen you know pretty much what I do so uh, hopefully I do pretty good on that. Let me know what you guys think about the edit. Do you like that or um, do you want to see more? I don't know. Let me know. And uh, I want to get to go ahead and put even a divider here just to divide the one tile from the mosaics. So I think it comes out pretty good. Um, in the end, because I try to get it all grouped eventually, uh, I don't know when I do that exactly, but uh, it's kind of a chore to get everything selected here that I want to put in the group, but it works out pretty good. So I did all this knowing that I wanted to put some kind of a trim around it so because I know the sides don't quite match up. So we get that done um, in a little bit, but uh, yeah, I wanted the top and bottom both to match. So I definitely want to get everything looking like it belongs there. And uh, here I just do some changing of the colors again. It takes me a while to figure out colors, so I didn't want you guys to have to watch all of that. 
But here, I just wanted to put this in be to show you. If you're having trouble selecting something that's behind something else, just delete the object and then hit, you know, select what you want and then hit Control Z or undo. Uh, and that way you can get everything selected. And uh, yeah, I think this looks pretty cool. I like, I don't know why, but I really like the like aqua color. Um, so I try to add that into a bunch of stuff. As you can see, it's also in that beetle um, little picture there. So I did put that in quite a few places. But I'm using this African, I'm not exactly sure what it's called, African beam uh, to make the border here. And I realized that it's not super straight, this building. I guess it's at an angle somehow. But we we do the best we can with this. And again, I use this aqua color because uh, I just, I really like it. So <laughs> um, I decided to do away with this building. Uh, I really didn't like that. It was super big. And uh, these aren't big animals, so I just felt like it was way too big for them. But so I do uh, quite a bit of work here just at the front of the habitat. I leave the back alone, kind of like past that um, habitat door. So... Here I find the mud walls, and I decide to use these because uh, I kind of look—I kind of like the look of the mud walls. I'm kind of uh, liking that. I've, I saw some kind of Adobe style build on um, Zoo Chat, and I was like, "That looks really cool." So I stick with the mud walls and mud pillars and that kind of stuff for these, and I'm trying to figure out a top for this railing. Um, I eventually, this is what I end up doing is just using the same thing that we were using as the habitat border, um, and use it just for the top here. I think it turns out pretty good and, uh, I'm not quite sure like where to put it, but, uh, I leave it about there where you can just see the top part of the, uh, little, I don't know, cross beams, whatever you call it in there. So here I just kind of show you the end of the edit there. And so they're all in. I wanted to go ahead and move these all out where they belong on the outside of the habitat because they don't belong inside. So we do that. And then I wanted to make this in. It's not technically an indoor area, but it is a sheltered area. So I wanted to kind of separate it naturally. So I use these rocks. And the colors may not quite match, but it may just be the shade too. So I'm not sure. But I did just use Africa rocks. Um, I chose African and desert in the filters, I think. And so I decided to do a, a surrounding on this door here. For one, so it kind of hides the door from the view when you're looking at it from uh, the front of the habitat. I thought it looked pretty cool. So I went ahead and took away these, these beams here and just kind of made the rocks uh, be the frame for the door. It turns out good in the end. Um, and then obviously we need to move some of these things. And I move this again later um, because we put pillars in. So don't want that there, right? So I went ahead and moved some stuff around. Just mainly some bedding and move these grass pieces. But yeah, so we go ahead and delete what, what we don't need. Because we don't need these two. They're not really doing anything. And then here's that log enrichment I was talking about. I don't know if it was been there and I was just blind or um, if it just showed up because research got done. I don't know. But we put those in a couple of different places in the habitat. And I haven't seen the, the foxes use it. I kind of wanted to have that for the uh, cinematics in the end. But I, I haven't seen them use it yet. So I don't know. Maybe they can't get to it. But this is the roofing I decided to put on, or I don't know what you call it, the cover. I mean, again, it's not a totally indoor habitat, so. Um, but I used these, uh, I think we got them in the Australia pack, is that right? I don't know. <laughs> I could be wrong. Um, but yeah, so I cut out a bunch of this because all it is is uh, doing the same thing over and over again. But I do make that a group, I think, in the end. And just try to get it angled right. Um, and uh, as you can see, it's way too low right now. <laughs> Later on, you can see that the uh, keeper just can't even walk in the habitat. So we fixed that. Don't worry. 
Um, but yeah, so I'm going to move this out and over so we can, um, get more here. Cause obviously I want the whole, this whole part of the habitat to be sheltered. And I think in the end, it also shelters some of the guest path, which is good too. So I just, uh, do control X and, um, find the other piece that I'm wanting and just move it. I think I do that two or three more times. So here you can see it's pretty long. But again, I'm trying to get the right angle and the right length here. And uh, here I'm just messing with the rock wall so I can get it a little bit straighter. And then I go on to put this pillar here. Um, like I said, I really like the mud pillars and the mud walls for some reason in this build. So I wanted to go with that and um, I had a little bit of trouble of it poking up in, into the roof. So uh, eventually I do kind of angle the roof less and bring it up a little bit just so it's a little bit easier to get those to look right and look connected. And then I decide that's a pretty good place to put the uh, habitat and boards because, you know, why not? And I really, I don't like that you can't hide the uh, donation boxes because I really don't like that thing, the circular spinning thing on the top. I really don't like it. So I do eventually put those actually in the pillars. But here I wanted to put some rocks around and... I think I do some foliage foliage around here too. I can't remember. But yeah, so just I like that the, the fox is still like laying on top of these rocks, even though I displaced them. That's kind of weird. But <laughs> but yeah, so I go ahead and I moved that tree out of the way before I uh started with the habitat barrier, so I wanted to move it back. And I knew that was gonna not work for the um the keepers. So I was trying to move those rocks a little bit. It still didn't work. So I do quite a bit of work trying to get these rocks out of the way. Um, and I also move them, move a lot of the rocks up because they're pretty buried into the ground. And I put a little bit of a topper on the doorway here. I just thought that made it look a little bit better. Um, I may go back and put some windows, uh, a couple of windows in there. I just had to figure out what to do as far as the rocks go but yeah as you can see here now the keepers can go in <laughs> it works so i went ahead and got all the sacred scare beetles that i have in the trade center and put them in here so this is the animal that we got for the uh, exhibit animal for the africa pack so i definitely wanted to put this somewhere in the zoo and I thought this was a pretty cool area to do it. And um, so went ahead and made sure it was in the work zone. Uh, so the keeper will come and uh, handle that. So now um, I'm just looking to see if we can uh, get a little bit of stuff around here. Like here with the glass. Um, I really like these 3D things. They're really cool, I think. So I wanted at least one side to be that. It may change um, in the end. I'm not exactly sure if I want to put maybe the staff area behind there or not. And if I do that, I may just have a path going around there. But then we lose that one 3D part of the wall. So I don't know. I'm not sure what I want to do there. But uh, again, I go for the mud wall here because, you know, why not? <laughs> it's kind of a theme. So... Uh, I'm not sure if it exactly says African theme, but I like it. So <laughs> went ahead and put these around and I also changed the color to, I, I know, I think I've mentioned it before. I don't really like yellow. I don't mind this color though. It, I think it looks pretty good. And I tried for this pillar. I left it in just to show you guys what I started with and then what I ended up with, but I tried to make it look as connected as possible, even though it's not connected to the building. But again, I wanted to use something from the Africa theme, and that was Africa, and that was um, from either base game or... I think it was base game. Or no. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but I went ahead and went with this, and again, with the color changing and everything, I think I left that all in this one. Um, 
And I like how it turned out. I like in the end what colors I picked. And again, I did put the aqua color in there, and I really like that. I don't know if it's aqua or turquoise or I don't know, but whatever color that is. And then I went ahead and just covered this up with the yellow uh, mud walls. I could have just used a, a whole wall, but here I'm trying to figure out something to put on top. And in the end, I went ahead and just took um, a piece from the little building in the entryway, and I'm using this uh, little, I don't even know what to call it, um, but the little piece that has those kind of cutout looking things in it, I think it looks pretty good. I like, I like the way it just kind of frames it a little bit, and I just show a couple of those placing, and then obviously the color again. <laughs> I don't know why I like this color so much, but I really do. It's like when I first, when I got my first car, I wanted a seafoam green car and they didn't make seafoam green anymore. So I couldn't get one. I was super sad, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, so that's why I like it, I think. But, and then I think in the end, my first car was a bluish color. So I think it was bluish silver, but anyways, uh, so I go with these little um, decorative pieces up here at the top. I just wanted something to put up here. And the, since those uh, beetle things are too big and I couldn't find any other beetle things that came with the pack, I was like, well, let's just use these. So I did. <laughs> and I just go ahead and uh, copy those over, I think to all four sides, I'm pretty sure. But here I wanted to put a couple of uh, little... <laughs> little shots of the uh, beetles doing their thing here. And uh, then we go back to putting some nature in here. I re had a really hard time with this because the trees just don't fit because it's not, you know, tall enough. So I was trying to put some down as bushes, like more down in the ground, but it just didn't look right, at least for those. Um, so I went ahead and put some of these grasses here. And I think they look pretty good um, because I really like those new pieces of grass. This one I did bury in, and it looks pretty good because it looks... I mean, I know that's not really a bush, but this one I definitely wanted to use because uh, it was pink. So I do use that eventually. But, but these... Uh, and I didn't check on the Fennec Fox like liking all of these, uh, all this foliage, but it is Africa... And it is desert, so I'm just going to stick with it. <laughs> so I put some around on the other side as well uh, because we can't get them in on the covered side. So I was like, I've got to put these in. So I did move this um, ball to the other side. <laughs> I don't know what ball it is. And I saw this uh, little control sticking out. I had to do something with it. So I went ahead and moved the whole thing uh, out a little bit and also moved the handle over because it's really in the center. I don't like that. But this is me trying to uh, cover up the uh, donation docs things. And uh, it works out. <laughs> I, I, I was like, I've got to get those closer to the path so they'll cover up that. But I also wanted to put some more rocks here. And then I decided they needed something on them. Because they're very plain. <laughs> well, you know, as plain as rocks go, anyways. So, I decided to go for the Fennec Fox um, statue. Uh, something? Yeah. And <laughs> it, uh, I had to do a lot of moving around to make it actually look like it was standing on the rock. Kind of like the ones we used in front of the habitat. Um, I just had to maneuver it around so it looked a little bit more believable that they were sit standing on there. Um, of course, they're statues, so it's not like it has to be realistic, but it looks better that way, I think. And again, I used this bush, and I really like this bush. I wish I could remember what the name of it was. But, yeah, so um, I went ahead and moved some of these rocks around just so they're not uh, close, they're, so they're not on the path. You guys know me. I really don't like when the guests can walk through stuff that you put on the path. It's really annoying. Uh, <laughs> but that that's all I'm going to say about that. So uh, <laughs> I try to do a little bit of a climbing area just to get them up and maybe put something up there that they can play with. But I couldn't get it to work. I, I, can, I looked at the traversable area and they could not do any of it. So I took it out. And um, I'm just going to add some more foliage because, you know, 
Foliage makes everything look better, I think. Uh, <laughs> hopefully you guys, you guys think so too. Um, but yeah, so here's some in cinematics. I hope you guys have enjoyed. And if you have, don't forget to hit that thumbs up. Also subscribe and hit that bell to get notified of videos as they come out. And if you want to play this game or check out any of my social media or Patreon links, they're all down below in the description. Check those out and come over and have some fun over there. And um, if you want to become a Petunia Pal, the Patreon link is down below. So you can come and hang out on Discord and game servers with us on Thursdays. And yeah, until next time, I hope you have a super blessed night or day wherever you are. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye, guys. <laughs>